Yeah. There, there, all these PowerPoint specialists. Thank you. So this is a, a before picture, rather pleasant place to be. It's beautiful, beautiful valley if you ever go up there. Now look what it looks like. Next. Uh, that's what it kind of looks like now. That's Treaty 8 territory. Uh, just an awful thing to do to a valley. Next. Um, the basics of Site C, very controversial, nine or, or so billion bucks, 5,100 gigawatt hours per annum at a cost of close to nine billion, 500,000 hectares of farmland, pretty good stuff too, buried, uh, all of her, uh, somewhere close to 25 permanent jobs on site, so everybody loves to talk about how many construction jobs, those are temporary, this is permanent. Uh, whether it's proven need for power, nobody's actually said that they have, and various people have opined that there's no need for it. Um, BC's industrial rates only $54 dollars per megawatt hour. Uh, site C's, as you'll see from some calculations I've done, and Karen has done even more, um, will come out north of 100. So, how you sell stuff for 54 bucks and you make it for 100 isn't the business case that I've ever met. So, next. Quite unpopular, next. Uh, the joint review panel in 2014 said uh, the panel concludes the proponents has not fully demonstrated the need for the project and the timetable set forth. And Christy Clark promptly forgot that. So, next. Uh, grid electricity supply and demand. Every economic economist knows you know, the graph of price and uh, supply and demand. Um, I'll talk about it a bit. Uh, 5,100 gigawatt hours is about 7% more than is currently in the grid. We produce, BC Hydro produces about 70,000 gigawatt hours per annum. You have to have a bit of spare for those cold days and, and uh, surges, uh, but we, they sell about 50 uh, terawatt hours. Uh, this would be 50,000 of those 70,000 they sell. Um, uh, the revenue is about 4 billion bucks um, that you and I pay. Um, residential. Uh, commercial and industrial, large industrial are the three segments. Uh, they're roughly equal, uh, but you notice there's only 185 industrial customers that consume 30% of the total power. So, and they get a deal at about all, all told 56 bucks, whereas you and I, as residential customers, pay double that. So, there's always been an industrial incentive in hydro's bucks. They're taking it to the limit with with side C. Uh, next, uh, I looked at three alternatives and said, but these are reasons why BC Hydro has put forth as to why to build this thing. Uh, we've got growth happening and uh, electrification of the economy, which I do agree will happen. Um, then there's this famed LNG myth, um, and then there's export sales either to variously, depending who you hear, hear from, Alberta or the US Pacific Northwest grid. Next. Uh, BC Hydro, I first tell you a story, I went to, when I first arrived in Vancouver, I went to the Canadian club, CEO of BC Hydro was there and said, all of you down there eating your lunch, uh, you'll be eating sushi in the dark if you don't let me build Hat Creek, a coal-fired plant, Site C, this one, and three nuclear plants, like, right away. <laughs> um, that was my introduction to Hydro's forecasting. Uh, none of those plants were built, and are still on. Uh, this was 1980, this is 37 years later. Um, so their electricity forecasts nobody believes, um, they, except hydro executive. Next. Um, flatter than a pancake than the road from Regina to Calgary has been the demand curve. Uh, notice the price here, 87 bucks is the average rate between the industrial, commercial and and uh, residential customers, um, basically as we've lost pulp mills, uh, the power drop there, or demand drop there, has come, been compensated by, by customers, the quarter of a million extra accounts that have moved into BC since these things started. But overall, flatter than a pancake. No known demand increase, and one part of that is because every time that they raise the rates, we tend to turn the lights off and use more uh, sophisticated technology. Next. Um, LNG, this is case B. Uh, back in 2011, when uh, there was a thing called Fukushima, 
the lights in Tokyo went out when they turned off 54 nuclear reactors. Price went up to about 20 bucks per million BTUs. Um, it's back around uh, $6.40. Um, and anyhow, okay. And uh, the break even price to make it in BC is about 11 bucks. So, again, how you make something for 11 and sell it for 6 bucks 40 um, isn't a business case I've had anything to do with. Next. Uh, this is what sites, what Treaty 8 territory is going to look like if that LNG thing ever happens. Um, and uh, I, I wouldn't want to be uh, there. Uh, this is a shot from Wyoming without trees, but that's what it, the Montany area is beginning to look like. Next. Um, so the LNG dream isn't likely to happen next, um, despite her prognostications. Next. Um, Selling it to uh, Site C, power to Alberta. This is a graph produced, or numbers produced by Hydro Quebec every year. Um, basically, we'd have to match that figure to sell it Calgary and Edmonton, uh, 40 or 50 bucks. And remember that north of 100 is roughly Site C's cost of production. So we're not going to do that without selling the big loss. So next. And exporting it, less than 30 bucks a megawatt hour. Make it for 100, sell it for 30, not a business case. Next. So the three analysis, when I did it, said that the break even price is about 120 bucks, including a $1 billion tie line to get the power ready where we're, they would use it. Um, the price to LNG is 54 bucks. It's been set by the government. Uh, we would net roughly lose 18 billion bucks in building a $9 billion. Uh, Site C Dam, and if we go to the northwest and sell it back into the US, uh, it would cost us a lot more than that. So, um, a break even price of 120 is way too much. Next. Um, next. Uh, the basic hydro use is a short term elasticity factor of 5%, so they basically think that we are a captive audience. We have nowhere to go, and no matter what they do with the price, we won't stop our using electricity, or at least theirs. Next. Um, alternative energy sources, uh, the, the conservation is the number one. It cost uh, Bob Elton his job when he said that. Um, he was the chair of BC Hydro um, and a former workmate of mine. Um, and the renewables has been totally ignored by Hydro. They have uh, but 0.07 percent penetration of solar into the uh, into the net metering. Um, for example, Hawaii has 23%, so we're way behind on that. They take their name literally in that if it's not hydropower, they don't know about it. If all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Um, Columbia River Treaty, about the same size, about 80% of the power of Site C, we're entitled to under the Columbia River Treaty, and we, it, the review panel was told to ignore that. It's come to you, and we can... We can take advantage of it, we don't need, and at a price that's about 25 bucks a quarter of what it would take to build Site C. Um, and then some other sources. <laughs> and I'm, I'm through. Yeah. <laughs>